This is no ordinary studio. And he's no ordinary artist. Nika Safronov is making an exception and drawing me today. Usually it's men like billionaire and former politician Alexander Lebedev who pose for Safronov. What do the two men think of Russia, of Russia's elite, who they know well, both professionally and personally? Politicians are like pigeons. When they're down, they feed from your hand. When they're up, they defecate on your head. A democracy built on an unripe foundation is a much more dangerous thing than the cutback democracy that we have. Putin does things that no one before him dared to do, other than Jesus Christ, perhaps. I have great respect for Putin. The myth that the Putin regime is always taking something away from people is just that, a myth. And this is one aspect of Lebedev's business today, among other things. The billionaire is having parts for power plants built in this once dilapidated Soviet-era factory. At the moment he is losing money, but he keeps on doing it, he can afford to. Because he believes in Russia's strength, particularly the strength of its economy, even if things are tough at the moment. Our economy will rise when the conditions are finally right. Russia's businesses were sidelined because there was no money available for them. There was no money, it was stolen. Just like how everything in this plant was stolen. Machines, land, at night even the finished products were stolen. The former owner was a crook, now he's in jail. Russia's economy is weak, due to low oil prices and sanctions from the West. The government is providing less and less for the people. The gap between rich and poor is growing. But Moscow is all a glitter. Property prices are rising. This central district at the Patriarch Ponds is just as expensive as the prices districts of London or New York. Russia's affluent younger generation lives here and they like to spend money. This area is one of the most expensive neighborhoods in Moscow, a place to be, and to have an apartment here is more a matter of prestige than an actual necessity. He has an apartment nearby, an 800 square meter palace. The painter Nika Safronov shows me his carefully renovated, neo-Gothic, religious-looking historic building. Ten minutes walk from the Kremlin. Every object is a rarity, something the lord of the manor prizes. His city villa is estimated to be worth up to 40 million US dollars. His style? A colorful mix. He calls it dream vision. The portraits are the most valuable. Safronov is regarded as a court painter and friend of oligarchs, ministers and others. I draw faces that are interesting. No one wants to know a man who's hoping to win a million in the lottery. But everyone wants to know the man who has won that million. Putin's like that, a professional, a man, a patriot, someone I find interesting and I respect. Alexander Lebedev, however, is regarded as a Putin critic. The multi-millionaire financed the anti-government newspaper Novaya Gazeta and was himself once a member of the Russian parliament. Today Lebedev exposes corruption, but he's cautious when it comes to the Russian president himself and his relationship to the oligarchs. For ethical reasons, I don't want to take the oligarch's side. They made their money through illegal privatization. I know that better than anyone. My investigations were not about Putin personally. He hasn't put any money aside. Of course, he probably has the requisite number of homes, expensive cars, airplanes, and so on. But that's not that important to him. He could just as well sleep in a tent. Many people here believe Putin gave the Russians their former greatness back, following the chaos of the 1990s. All of Nika Safronov's projects evoke nostalgia for past glory, a glory that the West doesn't appreciate, according to the painter. The West uses Russia as an example, but that's wrong. Russia remains an important part of this world. Without Russia, there's no Germany, no Poland, no Europe. The world can't exist without Russia, just as the world can't exist without bees, even though they sting once in a while. Businessman Alexander Lebedev's office may be located far away from the Kremlin, but he too believes that Russia is on the right path with its current policies.
A lot of the problems that Russia is said to have today are made up. The peak of the crisis has been reached. We have adapted. And after the vote, Russia will also get another Duma, a better one. Not as good as I would like, but what can you do? Belief in Russia's future is something that many members of Generation Putin have in common. They hardly express criticism. Russia is simply a unique country, to which unique standards must apply. Russia. Russia is unbeatable. It'll never be communist or European. Russia's always lived according to its own rules and has gone its own strange way. Those who have the money can afford their own golden Russia and hope that it stays that way. <laughs>